This video is about Green's theorem, a theorem that relates two kinds of integrals. Green's theorem relates a line integral over a simple closed curve, C, to a double integral over the region that C encloses. Recall that a simple closed curve, closed means that the curve starts and ends at the same point, and simple means the curve doesn't intersect itself. So a simple closed curve is the kind of curve that would enclose a region of the plane. Because the orientation of a curve affects the value of certain line integrals, when you switch the orientation of the curve, the line integral can switch from positive to negative. For that reason, we need to make a definition about orientation. A simple closed curve that forms the boundary of a region D is called positively oriented if, as you traverse C, the region always lies on your left. So if I draw the following region and the following boundary curve for that region, then if I want the boundary curve to be positively oriented, I need to orient it counterclockwise so that my region will always be to my left as I travel along this curve. If I were to orient it the other way, so that the region lies to my right as I travel around the curve, that would be negatively oriented. Sometimes a region might have several boundary curves. For example, a non-simply connected region like this one has three boundary curves. I'll call them C1, C2, and C3. In order for these boundary curves to be positively oriented, C1 has to be oriented counterclockwise, so the region will be to the left, but C2 and C3 had better be oriented clockwise so that the region, again, will be to the left as I travel around this curve. With those definitions out of the way, we can state Green's theorem. Let F be a vector field with components P and Q and suppose that P and Q have continuous first partial derivatives. We're going to use the notation partial d to represent the positively oriented piecewise smooth curve or collection of curves that bounds a region d. So smooth, a curve is smooth if it can be parameterized by a vector curve r of t such that r prime of t exists and is not zero. That prevents us from having cusps or corners in the inside of the curve, although we can still use a piecewise collection of smooth curves, so we can still have cusps or corners between the pieces, C1 and C2, for example. So we have a region D and a boundary that's positively oriented that we're calling DD. Although it may seem weird to use the partial notation for a boundary, we use it for derivatives in the past, there's actually a correspondence between taking boundaries of regions and taking derivatives of functions, so it's, it's no coincidence here. Green's theorem is going to let us relate the line integral around the curve, boundary of D, to a double integral inside the region. We're going to take the line integral of our vector field, so that's the line integral of f dr, and that's going to equal the double integral of q sub x minus p sub y, where p and q, recall, are the components of the vector field f. Remember that we can write this line integral as the integral of p dx plus q dy. So another way to state Green's theorem is that the line integral around the boundary of p dx plus q dy is the double integral of the partial q sub x minus the partial p sub y dA. Recall the reason that f dr is equal to this expression is that we can write this as p q dotted with r prime, which is x prime, y prime, which is the same thing as p x prime of t plus q y prime of t dt 
which is the same thing as p dx plus q dy, since dx is x prime of t dt, and dy is y prime of t dt. That justifies that this second statement of Green's theorem is the same thing as the first. There are a few common alternate notations for this expression with the boundary of D. Instead of the boundary of D, we can just write C, where we assume C is the positively oriented boundary of D. Sometimes we write this line integral with a circle around it to help remind us that we're taking the integral around a closed curve. The reason we're making such a big deal about the boundary being positively oriented is because if we take the, orient the opposite orientation, the negative orientation, for a line integral, that's the negative of the original integral. So that won't be equal to the double integral, like it would be if we were positive oriented, it would instead be the negative. So let's use Green's theorem to evaluate a line integral. The line integral given here, where C is the positively oriented boundary of the rectangle with vertices at 0, 0, 3, 0, 3, 4, and 0, 4. So that's this rectangle. And positively oriented means we go in this direction. I'll write this as the union of four curves, four smooth curves, C1, C2, C3, and C4. Now, of course, I could compute this line integral directly just by parameterizing each of these four curves in terms of t and then writing everything out and computing four integrals, one for each of the four curves. But it's actually going to be a lot easier to use Green's theorem. So remember that Green's theorem says that this line integral of p dx plus q dy is the double integral of q sub x minus p sub y. So this is our p here, gets multiplied by d, dx, and the q is the part multiplied by dy. So therefore, q sub x is the derivative of q, so that's just 2 e to the x again. p sub y is the derivative of the p part with respect to y, that's e to the x. And so if we do the double integral of q sub x minus p sub y, with respect to area element, that's the double integral of 2 e to the x minus e to the x, which is the double integral of e to the x. Now, I can compute this dx dy or dy dx. It'll be pretty easy either way. I'll do dx dy. My x bounds are just going to go from 0 to 3. My y bounds are going from 0 to 4. So I'll compute with respect to x first. So the integral of e to the x is e to the x, evaluated between 0 and 3. That gives me the integral of, let's see, e to the 3 minus e to the 0. So that's going to be the integral of e cubed minus 1 dy. Integrating that, I get e cubed minus 1 times y between 4 and 0. And so my answer is 4 times quantity e cubed minus 1. Green's theorem made computing that integral super easy. In this video, we saw that if we have a region D and we positively orient its boundary, in this case its boundary consists of two curves, C1 and C2, then the line integral around the boundary of a vector field with components p, q, f, d, r is equal to the double integral of the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y integrated over that region. This can also be written as the integral over the boundary of p dx plus q dy is that double integral.